Hello everyone, and welcome to the University of Ottawa. I want to especially welcome you to our civil engineering department. My name is Professor Gisanduda, and with this brief presentation, I'd like to provide you with some important information that will hopefully help you transition to the university life and give you a strong beginning in your first semester. We do realize that these are difficult times for everybody, and it is particularly difficult for new students. We want to assure you that all professors, administrative staffs, lab officers all have one goal in mind, and that is to try to make your first semester as comfortable and as enriching as possible. Let me start with a little bit of historic perspective on the place where you'll be spending the next four years of your life. Civil engineering at the University of Ottawa began back in the mid-1870s, where it was known as the College of Ottawa. Back then, we had 10 students registered. More than 140 years later, we now have around 120 new undergraduate students annually and over 300 graduate students. We currently also have 23 full-time regular faculty members, three full-time teaching professors, and 15 adjunct professors. The diversity in the professor's background is reflective of the diversity found in, in different civil engineering uh, disciplines and projects. From tall buildings, as you can see on the slide, uh, to bridges, roads, and dams, these are all examples of types of exciting and multidisciplinary projects that a civil engineer would be involved in. For example, take the dam building that you see on this slide here. It involves so many different branches and disciplines from within civil engineering, including geotechnical engineering to ensure proper foundation and soil uh, structure interaction, to structural engineering dealing with the design of the building itself, to river engineering and hydrology, which deals with the flow of water around the dam, construction management to optimize the building and operation, and environmental engineering to assess the impact of the structure on the surrounding environment, like, for example, if you have a fish habitat in the region. Now, in order to understand and overcome these design challenges, the department offers several specialization within civil engineering. For example, you can follow the general stream and obtain a bachelor degree in civil engineering, or by selecting specific courses in the third and fourth year, you can follow the engineering management and entrepreneurship option, environmental and water resource engineering, structural and geotechnical option, or you can also follow civil engineering um, and a bachelor degree in computing technology, which allows you to finish your studies within, with two degrees, but at the cost of a single additional year of studies. Now, to just give you an idea about the general structure for the program, you can see here that the first two years primarily focus on fundamental science and engineering. Um, I've provided a few examples of the courses that you will be required to take in your uh, first and second year. You can see that even in the first year, there are a few courses that would be more specifically related to civil engineering. Those are, for example, uh, drafting or introduction, introduction to civil engineering. In the second year, you'll learn about engineering material and mechanics. Um, and again, some of the courses are specifically related to civil engineering, for example, surveying. The third year is generally dedicating to analyzing different structural systems. And during the fourth year, you'll learn how to design such systems. Of particular interest in the fourth year is the capstone design project, which essentially is an amalgamation of all the knowledge that you have learned during the four years. And it also goes beyond that knowledge you'll be able to perform complete analysis and designs on projects that are as similar as possible to real life projects that you might encounter in your career after graduation. Now that you have a good idea about the program and you're hopefully eager to start, what are the things that you need to keep in mind, especially for your first semester? Well, probably the most important thing to do is to start planning as early as possible. A university semester is relatively short and could be very different than what you might be used to in high school. It's always a good idea to start planning what your schedule will be like from day one so that you don't fall behind. Secondly, it's important to consult with the course outline. You'll realize that course outline contains a lot of useful information, information that would probably answer a lot of the questions that you may have. Just take a quick look at it maybe once a week. Um, just to know where the course uh, progress might be, when the assignments are due, 
uh, what is the topic for next week's lecture, etc. Now, even after consulting with the outline, you may still have a lot of questions about the course material or course structure. Don't be afraid to ask. Ask the TA, ask the professor, or even some of your colleagues. If you have some general questions related to the courses, you can also con contact Dr. Mamadou Fall, who is the Associate Chair Undergraduate Studies. Now, make the effort to attend all the live lectures and tutorials, since a lot of useful information will be conveyed during those sessions. A lot of those lectures will be recorded and posted, but that should not really be the reason why you should skip class or miss the opportunity to engage with your colleagues or ask direct questions to your professors. Now, there will be online office hours that will be usually provided by your professor. Again, attend those. Whether you have questions or not, after a few sessions, you'll feel much more confident to ask questions and engage in discussions. And finally, it is important to create online study groups. Just because everything is happening online, it doesn't mean that you should do everything on your own. Having a study group, even if they are virtual, will help you understand the technical content of the subject matter, and they will also help you develop social interaction with your colleagues. One of the most challenging aspects of starting in a new place is getting familiar with the tools available. And probably one of the most important tools at the university is the one that you need to access your course. This tool is called Brightspace. That is where a lot of the course material like notes, pre-recorded videos, etc., would be found. Now, having said that, it's very important to know that possibly a different app or a different forum might be used by your professor to run the live lectures. Some professors might choose Microsoft Teams, others might use Zoom or any other app, depending on the class needs or depending on the preference of the professor. It is important that you consult with a course description or course outline to obtain the detailed information on how the course will be run. You're also probably thinking, well, I chose civil engineering because I like to do things hands-on. Like I like lab works, I like to be engaged more. Now under normal circumstances, lab activities would be very high priority for us, and several courses would be accompanied by physical labs. However, uh, due to the current situation and for the safety of the students, of course, professors and lab officers have worked very hard to continue to provide some level of practical work to the undergraduate uh, courses. Um, and this would help you understand the subject matter uh, much, much better. Now, possible scenarios uh, when it comes to the lab work uh, could include experiment, experiments that will be uh, filmed and sent to the students uh, for their uh, analysis. Uh, students might uh, essentially be sent a kit uh, to conduct the, um, the, the tests themselves. Uh, experiments could be conducted through uh, virtual reality, or even the students may be uh, connected to the lab, to the computer labs or other labs remotely in order to uh, do some of those tests. Uh, this will, of course, depend on the course. It will uh, depend on the, um, on the different labs. And details uh, will, of course, be posted on Brightspace uh, for each course. Now, uh, please allow me uh, to introduce you to the faces of some of the professors uh, that you will be encountering in, civil in the civil engineering department. Um, the professor's uh, expertise, as I mentioned before, will be very closely reflective of the various civil engineering disciplines uh, we mentioned before. So here you can see different groups. For example, here you can find the uh, environmental engineering group, uh, the uh, geotechnical engineering group, the material sustainability and construction management group, water resources, and last but not least, the structural engineering group. Now, these professors are committed to helping you through uh, your studies. Uh, to give you an example here, uh, in order for you to understand how the forces are generated, uh, here's an example of uh, an earthquake force. You can see how the plates, the Pacific plate and the North American plate um, uh, are moving. And they will also help you deal with the consequences associated with these forces. More importantly, how to mitigate them and how to keep the public safe, which is the civil engineer's number one priority. Another example you can see here, uh, wind forces, and all the devastating impact uh, it could have on society, uh, as demonstrated in this example from the uh, Don Robin tornado that occurred uh, in the Ottawa Gatineau region two years ago. Other natural disasters you can find here uh, could be associated with, for example, landslides. 
Uh, they have very destructive effect on building, as shown in this video. Uh, this is from a village in, uh, in Quebec. Now, in order to mitigate these forces uh, and mitigate these disasters, uh, all of our professors engage in innovative research projects in various labs. Uh, here you can see an example uh, of the structural lab. Uh, even at the undergraduate level, uh, you'll be able to have several opportunities to be involved, whether it is through the COA program, uh, the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program, the Europe pro program, the Women in, in Science and Engineering program, uh, and so on. Uh, here are some examples of the research in the Structural Engineering Lab, uh, where we can see that the earthquake forces are being simulated in our lab on, on different frames. Here's another example uh, of a research in water resource, and this is showing the effect of tsunami on uh, coastal structures. Another example is uh, research in blast. Uh, now we have a very, very unique facility in the structural lab where a shock tube, as uh, shown in this slide, uh, is used to simulate the effect of blast on buildings and other, other infrastructures, of course. Uh, here's an example of that shot on uh, a beam or column. Uh, and it allows us to not only understand the behavior, but also enhance the capacity and performance uh, after we have realized what the failures uh, and failure mechanisms are. Another very timely and relevant research project uh, that some of our research um, faculty members are involved in is the COVID-19 Wastewater Coalition. Uh, it aims uh, to use the data from wastewater, uh, from testing, uh, and of course, additional clinical tests of individual, and those provides early warning of upcoming possible uh, second wave of the virus. So, um, in addition to the research opportunities available at the university, of course, students uh, can also engage in real life projects through the co-op program. Of course, those students who are registered in that program. Now, this program starts after two years uh, where the students are registered for two years, uh, they take courses, and then after the two years, they start alternating between a paid co-op placement and regular university semester. Now, the placement rate uh, at the university is very high, uh, and thanks to you know, a number of companies that we have in the uh, ottawa Gatineau region and to the federal and provincial governments, uh, we have access to a lot of companies that the student can, uh, can utilize. Now, as mentioned before, during the two final semesters, students will uh, be able to tackle an open-ended project um, that in many cases involves multiple disciplines. Uh, these projects also typically include industry involvement, uh, expertise from the supervisors or the professors that are at the, at the faculty, and a final presentation. Now, based on the final presentation, we typically select a group of individual um, and we ask them to present uh, and compete at regional and, and national competition. Now, one example of that would be the, uh, the PEO, the Professional Engineer of Ontario competition, uh, but also the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering uh, conference. So students would actually go to the conference and present their work there. Uh, here, in fact, you can see uh, one of our team uh, who won the 2019 National uh, Civil Engineering Capstone Design, uh, Design Competition. Now, uh, going from the technical uh, part to something that involves a little bit more fun, a little bit more social aspects, uh, we have other design competition that we are involved in. Um, uh, some examples of that would include the uh, concrete canoe competition, the concrete toboggan competition, and also the uh, snow structure contest. Uh, mentioning uh, CSCE before, the Canadian Society for Civil Engineering, we actually have a very active chapter on campus where the students could benefit from you know, networking opportunities, some discounts on annual and special conferences, uh, national lectures, short courses, and so on. Now, one very important point to remember during this time is do not forget to take some personal time. Take some time with your family, with your friends. Uh, your physical and mental well-being is extremely important, especially when the world is experiencing so many changes and so many challenges. We all have to adapt and try to excel in this type of environment. Hello everyone, my name is Zoya and I'm going into my fourth year of electrical engineering at the University of Ottawa. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the facilities at the Faculty of Engineering. 
So first off, let's start with the Undergraduate Studies Office. The Undergraduate Studies Office offers many services, starting with academic advice, advice on course sequences and how to adjust your course sequence if you need to, advice on registering for your courses and enrolling or dropping or swapping, advice on academic rules, changing your program if you feel like you need to, and they offer many forms for things like changing your program and course sequences and so on. The workshop is the Engineering and Computer Science Mentoring Center. They offer things like individual consultations with mentors, group discussions with mentors, study groups for specific courses, and workshops. Mentors will communicate with you on a weekly basis and they know where most student services are so they can help you find any resources you need on campus. We also have this upcoming project where you will be getting a personalized mentor. The Engineering Peer Connect program is an opportunity for you to meet students, make new friends, network, and socialize with other engineering and computer science students. It is a volunteer-based program and students need to register to participate. The faculty will be pairing students from all levels with other students based on their interests. When you're paired with a student, you can interact with them however you choose to, whether it's in person or through social media or many other platforms like MS Teams or email and Yammer and whatever works best for you. Watch out for an email from us. The registration will be the end of August 2020, so it will be available soon. We have many student clubs and associations at the faculty. I was a part of one myself called WISE, as you can see, it's the Women in Science and Engineering. All students are welcome to join any club or association that they find interesting, whether it's building a highly fuel efficient or off-road vehicle to designing a human hamster wheel for a museum display. There are many options to choose from. So if you are interested in working in a team or getting creative, then join one of our clubs and you can work on these exciting projects. SEED, or the Center for Entrepreneurship and Engineering Design, offers student competitions all year round, design courses so you can work with real life clients, design spaces and facilities that I'll talk about soon, and an entrepreneurial ecosystem so that you can develop your business skills and learn more. The buildings you see here offer different facilities and different spaces for students to use throughout the semester. Starting off with the STEM building, which houses most of the SEED facilities, SITE, which is the engineering building for electrical engineers, computer engineers, and computer science students, CDY, the Colonel By building, which is for civil engineering students, mechanical students, biomedical mechanical students, and so on, and the ARC building, which is the advanced research complex where most masters and PhD students do their research. Here we have some of the facilities that you'll find in the STEM building that you saw earlier. The Brunsfield Center is a student-led machine shop where staff and students can work with traditional manufacturing equipments like mills, lathes, bandsaws, drill presses, even welding and fabrication tools once you receive your proper training. It's open to all students who complete their training, which is offered by the Manufacturing Training Center. The Makerspace and the Maker Lab are both also in the STEM complex. The Makerspace is a place that allows everyone to collaborate and build their own projects. It's open to students, community members, and it's open to anyone who would like to invent, make, build, play, whatever they can think of. The space is organized by students from different fields of studies at the faculty. The Maker Lab offers a course-based laboratory setting focused on rapid prototyping technologies. The university courses can include lab sessions at the Maker Lab to give students a structured experience learning about many of the technologies available at the Makerspace. The Simon Nem Design Commons is a reconfigurable space that offers whiteboards, markers, couches, computers, it is a space that is open for everyone to meet in and the space that fosters creativity, design, and all different kinds of ideas. The John McIntyre team space is a space that offers tools for students in teams so they can work on their projects that you will see next. There are many competitive teams at the faculty. 
and most of these teams compete in diverse international competitions. There are teams that work on rockets, cars, electric cars, urban cars, concrete canoes for civil engineering, formula for all programs, bionics for biomedical mechanical engineers, and so many different aerospace engineering teams as well. Undergraduate students can also pursue opportunities in research by applying to the Europe Scholarship. This scholarship is worth $1,000. It helps you gain 50 hours of work in research between October and March, and you'll be supervised by a faculty member. The application for the scholarship is open as of August 1st, 2020. The co-op program just might be the solution you're looking for if you want to work and study which gives you more experience after you graduate. There's a 96% placement rate for most engineering students at the faculty, especially considering the tech hub in Canada. The salaries range between $18 and $22, and University of Ottawa is the number five largest university co-op program in Canada. The co-op program works like this. Study terms and paid work terms alternate. You end up with a degree and a year or more of practical work experience. During this time of increasing globalization and automation, most employers are seeking to recruit students who have the employment skills and values of a global citizen. In response to this growing interest, the University of Ottawa decided to launch UO Global Recognition. This is a program that aims to guide the development of your employment skills that are valued around the world, such as cross-cultural communication, innovation, adaptability, and so much more. Since these are changing times, these are some of the departments that can help you with your virtual transition into the university, such as the Career Development Center, the Student Academic Success Service, or SAS, and Student Life. Thank you for being here. You can also join us for a live Q&A session on September 8th. We'll be sending you more information via email, so stay tuned! Finally, we wish you all a successful first semester, and we welcome you once again to our beautiful university. Don't forget to attend the live Q&A session on September 8th and some of the videos that have been developed for the lab tours. Stay tuned, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Bye-bye.